All right, so yesterday I went to a gathering in Arnhem for a presentation by Mr. Shrum from NRG. NRG. Uh, NRG is basically a research organization in the Netherlands who operates a small nuclear reactor in Patten and uh, creates medical isotopes, but also does a lot of testing on nuclear materials and such. Now, the meeting itself was basically uh, for meant for higher educated engineers and such. So it was pretty technical, um, sometimes perhaps a little bit too complicated for some people to follow, but in all it was good and, and, and the, the, the contents of the presentation was good. So Mr. Shrum tried to explain to the audience um, how we can make nuclear more sustainable. And uh, he went through a lot of options, including thorium, including uh, MOX uh, production, deep borehole storage, efficiency, you name it. And uh, one thing that I noticed from not necessarily his presentation, but from from the audience and some of the responses, was that this was not a nuclear savvy audience. So at one point he was talking about you know the uh, nuclear fuel cycle, and um, at first it was just a generic fuel cycle, and then it turned into the nuclear fuel cycle after the click of a button. So it added you know uranium two thirty five enrichment. Uh, and, and, and and then waste and then you know an extra arrow which went into the um, uh, w which was basically a recycling arrow and that one went uh, once he clicked the button it showed plutonium 238 now I, I, I think that most of us know that you know uh, it's plutonium 239 that goes into mox fuel so I waited for a couple of minutes and I was like why is nobody pointing out that there is plutonium-238 on the slide where it should be plutonium-239? And that's when I figured this was not a really, uh, this was not really a nuclear crowd, but a, but, a, but a general crowd. And I put up my finger, I said, well, that, that's supposed to be plutonium-239, he agreed. And then I gathered that there were a couple of Twitter followers of mine sitting right next to me so that was nice um another takeaway from the meeting is that the general audience was old you know it was mainly uh, mainly old white guys um which uh, which 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 is probably the demographic for for you know this kind of meeting i mean this is basically an engineering and an, an, a meeting for people with an in, with a keen interest in engineering so uh, yeah uh, so lacking was youth i mean i'm 36 i consider myself still youthful uh there were like five of us there five youthful guys and about you know 45 elderly guys and a couple of women so uh yeah that was one of the things that i noticed another thing that i noticed was that um uh this was a this was a technical presentation so uh, people with a good technical back with a good technical grounding and some knowledge about isotopes and such uh they would uh, they would uh uh, you know, understand what's on the slides pretty easily. I think that Mr. Schramm presented it fairly, fairly well. Um, and at the end, we we got into the serious matter. Uh, you know, obviously, Mr. Schramm had uh, uh, he he could pretty well tell us why nuclear will become much more sustainable in the future and he was talking about uh, amongst other things molten salt reactors thorium high temperature reactors uh, research going on but he also said he also explained why that nuclear might have a rough time in the west 
and particularly in the, in the Netherlands, but why we don't have to, why, why we mustn't despair, because, you know, the East is, you know, picking up the slack, but he, 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 he concluded correctly that the biggest problem in the West is that we have been, I'm going to put it bluntly, sitting on our asses for so long that we've lost touch with how to do nuclear projects, big nuclear projects. And this is something we need to build up again. And that's, you know, that's going to require us to communicate much, much better and reach uh, a much wider audience. And that's something he also uh, said at the end of the, um, of the presentation. He said, listen, we're doing a, a bad job at reaching, you know, uh, everyday people, uh, making people uh, come to, you know, uh, nuclear conferences or, uh, making youths come into nuclear engineering because we do have a nuclear engineering school but there's not really a big nuclear future in the Netherlands at this moment we have Urenco we have uh, one reactor in uh, Patton which is basically the only research reactor we have we have another training and semi-research reactor in Delft at the university and we have one aging nuclear reactor for power production in Bosselo, which is, you know, it's going to run for another seven or eight years and then it's done. And it's a small one as well. I mean, it's like 550 megawatts or something like that. So, um, yeah, I thought it was important to recap what has happened yesterday. I think it was a very good presentation with some, you know, some, some, some minor things. Uh, I, I would have thought that he would, you know, also uh, include the uranium breeding cycle, which he sort of brushed off as, you know, this is not really a thing. Uh, I think he was thinking about contemporary uh, or, or old old style breeder reactors like the EBR2, which is basically, you know, uh, it, it's defunct now. Uh, the BN800 operates on, you know, somewhat of a similar similar cycle. So, but he was, he was more concentrated on molten salt reactors and thorium and so he didn't fall into the mouse trap of, uh, you know, uh, the bear trap of uh, saying that uh, thorium is less proliferation resistant or is more proliferation resistant, but he did say, and he was very honest, he said thorium is facing problems uh, mainly because we don't have an established supply chain and such and, you know, the lack of a the lack of a supply chain is also due to the fact that the, that we've sat on our asses for too long. Uh, main takeaway here is that uh, we need to communicate nuclear much better. Uh, Shrum, Mr. Shrum said the same. He also said we are flying over the heads of you know the regular people. Those people are basically uh, not reached. Uh, the last time when we reached uh, those people was with uh, with Aryan Lubach about half a year ago, I believe, when he he's a comedian and and he he gave a very serious, uh, very serious presentation on TV about why we need nuclear and why it is ridiculous that we Dutch people are just ignoring nuclear and it's also a very political thing. So yeah, the, we've got our work cut out for us. That's basically the message that I took away from yesterday. Uh, we need to reach more young, aspiring technicians. We need to uh, we need to have to somehow uh, make the public less fearful of um, of radiation. We have to show them the merits of nuclear reactors. And uh, yeah, because it's it's pretty simple. We in the Netherlands, we are all occupied with decarbonizing electricity, and electricity is only like ten or fifteen, or maybe perhaps twenty percent of uh, what we do. Personal electricity is about eight hundred to a thousand kilowatt hours per person per year, but if you look at primary energy use, it's per person per year. That's a somewhere between 40 and 50,000 kilowatt hours per person in the Netherlands and you know people tend to forget that it's everything I mean these 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 
filthy shoes which I use you know every day for running and working uh, they cost energy I mean all the stuff that this shoe is made of has to you know come from somewhere I mean this 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 lens hood here this lens cap for the camera for, with which I'm filming right now you know it costs energy to make this stuff so 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 most people they only they only focus on, on on a very small part of the story and they think that you know decarbonizing their own business home whatever you know with insulation and solar roofs and and whatnot is going to save us from climate change but that's not uh, an accurate assessment of the real situation so Nuclear can play a part in that, and I think that nuclear must play a part in that. It's it's the best and most overlooked energy uh, source that we have, and uh, Mr. Storm agreed, and I think that many in the audience yesterday agreed as well. And uh, yeah, we have to start working on uh, educating this stuff better. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye.